I was involved with three different wives. I had three wives then. Matum, Annette, and Ma'a. Mm -hmm. And my life was not as stable because I had other women pregnant. You know, a young girl, 19 years old, were pregnant. Outside of those three. Yeah, outside of those three wives. So our clients are complaining, past and present. And I, I know why they are, because the herbs that they are getting from the office that my husband and I have created, and the products that we've created, is no longer our products there. The imposters that are in that office and, and as they stole my office. They have, um, they have fraudulently um, signed my husband's name and, and uh, send it to the trademark office and they said now they own my business. I have nothing to do with that office. There is no product that I make that comes out of there. This is Dr. Sebi, first wife. Her name is Ma'a. The other lady you heard speaking earlier, I believe that's wife number three. So Dr. Sebi, apparently he has three wives, maybe more. As you saw in the earlier clip, he was, well, he did say he was married to three women. Then he had a 19-year-old and a 25-year-old pregnant outside of those three wives. I saw a video interview clip that he was, uh, this lady was interviewing his this lady, this wife that you see right now, and one of his daughters, she oh, she's almost in her 50s. And according to the daughter, she thinks her dad has about 50 something children. But according to this first wife that you're watching, she said she thinks the kids are in the hundreds because he traveled a lot. So apparently, Dr. Sibby was a rolling stone. And everywhere he went, he laid his stone, if you know what I'm saying. Uh -huh. So here goes the Dr. Sebi family legacy, or is it a dynasty, or is it just downright nasty? What do you say? This was a man, if you do your research, S-E-B-R, that's his name. If you do your research, he claimed to have healed a lot of sicknesses and disease. And I believe, I mean, I listened to a lot of the interviews and the testimony, I believe so. But it's evident he didn't, he didn't handle this business correctly professionally legally because if he had done if he had put all the legal ramifications in place i don't think these three wives plus the 500 children will be fighting over the business if you go through all through social media youtube you will find one set of the children from one part of the wife is claiming they have the right product they have the right ingredients the other side of case from the other side of wife is also claiming no don't believe those products we have the right product we have the authentic ingredients you go to the next set of case with the next set of wives they all, all of them with the Sebi last name or claiming to have the right product with the right ingredients that can do the job that you, that, that you can get the same results that you used to get when Dr. Sebi himself was alive and running the company. He should have put some stuff into place. That's the first mistake he, make, he made. The second mistake I think he made, now this is just my own personal opinion, is having all these multiple wives and 500 babies all over the world. What kind of legacy is that? So he had babies with all these women because... He didn't marry all of them because they have 50 kids. If he has 50 children or according to his, his first wife, hundreds and kids in the hundreds. So all these kids, if they don't know each other, chances are their path may cross them and end up marrying each other. We live in such a small world. So what kind of legacy did he leave behind? He seemed to have been a very nice guy who his heart was to heal his people from sicknesses and disease. Wonderful. But... It doesn't seem like he lived a life of integrity privately. And then people say, well, you have to separate a private man, his private life from his business or his, but can you really separate somebody's private life from their business? Is it possible to separate somebody's private life from their business, from the ministry, from the calling, from their talents? Is it possible? Because those things sometimes intertwine. If in your personal and private life, you lack integrity and judgment. Aren't you going to lack the same integrity and judgment in your business or your ministry? Do they not? Do they not cross or intertwine? I don't know how people always say you have to separate. I don't know how can you separate one from the other when it's the same person living one body but have multiple hats, different personality and make different choices at different times. But it's the same Dr. Sebi. And I just discovered him a few months ago and I was very proud of him to see a, a black man who has accomplished this much. But not to see how his life is. All the 
the, the different women and different children he have are different women. Now they're all fighting and claiming that each of them have the original product to, to solve your problem. I'm not going to uh, advise anyone to go to any one of those websites and get the right product because right now it's just their words against the other. And the only people that are really suffering in the middle of this, guess what? It's the, um, the poor, what do you call them? The tenants. The tenants, excuse me, I had, a, I had something come, a call coming in that just distracted me. Oh, Lord. I hope you guys can still, I was trying to get something off the screen. Yes, excuse me. Um, the only people that are really caught in the middle of this are the customers who really, really, who really, um, supposed to be the one who's supposed to benefit. We, we are the one being, I've never purchased his product, but when I found out about him a few months ago, I went to the YouTube to try to search to see if I can get the website. That's when I came across all this drama. So if you are interested in buying any of Dr. Sibi products or you have purchased any of his products since he, since he passed, chances are you are not getting the results you would have gotten if he was alive when he was behind this product. He's no longer around. People just using his name because his name is rep the name itself is reputable. So anybody can buy a trademark name and slap some products, make some stuff in the bathroom top and slap it and say Dr. Sabies. That's the world we're living in. My advice to you is get on your face, get on your knees, talk to God. Some of you say you talk to the universe. Okay, that's your business. The point is get back to your maker and your creator. Go back to the manufacturer of that product. What is the product? Your body. If your car is broken, you're going to go take it back to the manufacturer to get some uh, replacement part. If any part of your body is broken, go back to the manufacturer of that body and ask him for the solution, ask him for the answer. We're going to have to begin to seek God for ourselves individually and corporately and stop depending on names. It would have been nice if Dr. Sebi has had handled this properly, but apparently he didn't. He probably was too busy sleeping around making babies and having and dropping his seed all over the place, if you know what I'm saying. Dr. Sebi, family drama, Dr. Sebi, uh, legacy, Dr. Sebi, family di dynasty, or is it just downright nasty? Which one is it? Dr. Sebi, it is very sad to see all these women, your ex-wives and their children are each fighting for your name and your dynasty, or is it down nasty? I'm not sure what it, what to call it, but it's very sad to see that your name will go down with such smear. And there's some some rapper do out there. I don't, I can't remember his name. He's making a um, documentary about Dr. Sebi's life, but he's only interviewing one of the the wives, which makes no sense. How can you do a documentary about somebody's lives who are married three times, who have 500 children? If you want to find out who that person is, you're gonna to have to interview. All of the wives, they may not be friends, no problem. You don't have to interview them in the same room. But a wise person who does documentary will have to interview everyone and anyone who knew this person to get to know who this Dr. C.B. really is, not who we know him to be on the surface. But who is he? How can you have a documentary about Dr. C.B.? You only interview one wife. You have to get his stories. And who was the man Dr. C.B. to each of those wives? And it's possible to their children. Now, granted, you may have reached out, but we, went, we didn't. You didn't say that in the documentary, so we don't know. But you may have reached out, and they they may have declined to be in the interview to be part of the documentary. Great, if that's the case, then you have to you have to um and let us know in the disclaimer in the beginning of the, the documentary. But there's no such thing. There's one so-called wife. I think she's the third wife, and she's going all over the place claiming to be the only original Mrs. Doctor. You may be the last wife, but apparently he said out of his own lips he had three wives. Then he had a 19-year-old girl. And a 25-year-old girl, they were all pregnant, in addition to his three wives. And his daughter said he had 50-something kids. They, this wife said he, she know of 100 or more kids because he travel all the time. So how can you make a documentary about a man that lives such a flamboyant life and you want to interview one wife, knowing for where he has three, four wives? And if you don't know he had other wives, that's your job before you do a documentary to do your research and your interview properly. Thank you.